church. Welcome to our Sunday morning worship service. My name is Rick Tetow. Thank you for allowing me to serve as your chaplain. I welcome you, those who are in person, and if you are watching online, thank you for joining us this morning. Today is the first Sunday of Lent. Lent started on Ash Wednesday, and it ends on Holy Saturday, the day before Easter. So during this time, during Lent, we are going to have a new sermon series. It's based on the lives of two people from the Bible, Abraham and Sarah. Now, who can tell me which book of the Bible do we find the stories about Abraham and Sarah? Mike's got his hand up. Go ahead. Oh, Genesis. Genesis. So... If you're interested in reading more, look up the book of Genesis. It's the first book of the Bible. So the reason I want to do this is to find similarities between the lives of Abraham and Sarah and their journey of faith and our journeys of faith. Have you ever been called by God? Abraham and Sarah were called by God. Have you ever experienced the blessings of God? Sure. Abraham and Sarah experienced God's blessing. Have you ever been asked by God to make a significant sacrifice? <clears throat> Abraham and Sarah were asked to make a significant sacrifice. So during Lent, we're going to look at each of these different moments in their lives and reflect on those moments and how they relate to us. Okay? So if you want to talk more after church, like during the week about this, I'd be happy to talk to you. Or come to one of our Bible studies. So with that, I invite you to prepare your heart for worship. <coughs> Good morning. Good morning. Join me in our call to worship this morning. Blessed are those who make the Lord their trust. We will all turn to the crowd, to those who go astray after false gods. O Lord my God, you have multiplied our wondrous deeds and your thoughts towards us. None can compare to you. Our morning hymn this morning is He Leadeth Me. Find it in page 28 in the song book. <laughs> We're in the hymn book. It's not the hymn, though. No. Okay. Oh,
lifted up any prayer concerns this week, which is a good thing. I know there's concerns out there, but we did have some praises. So welcome back, Bill and Dorothy. We're well glad you made it safely back here. Amen. Charlie, you had a praise this morning. Would you like to tell us? I am the proud grandfather to a baby girl. Don't ask me her name. There's a long one to pronounce. But my brother, she was born on Valentine's Day, his birthday, which made him a double blessing. And when he called and told me, we were out and about then. I thought, my goodness, she is well and healthy, and that's all that matters. We praise God, God for, her, for her life and for the new family that's been made. So thank you for sharing. So let us go before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, as we journey through the season of Lent, remind us that we are not alone. You have set out on this journey before us, and you go with us on our journey. Lord, you teach us, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Lord, we pray that these days draw us closer to Easter and that the good news of your resurrection that you give us a hunger to know your word and a thirst for your abiding presence in our lives. Help us to faithfully proclaim your name in our words and deeds. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let us pray as Jesus first taught his disciples to pray. <coughs> our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We have special music, so this was the first song that Mike and I both thought of when we thought about a sermon series on Abraham. <laughs>
from today comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, various verses. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out not knowing where he was going. By faith he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. One day, Peter came to Jesus with a question about forgiveness. Peter asked Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. In other words, there is no limit to God's forgiveness. It is in God's very nature to love and forgive. The book of Genesis is the first book of the Bible. One can say the book of Genesis is about many things. Creation, families, faith, and the promises of God. As we take a closer look at the stories in this book, I invite you to look at these stories in a new way. Let us look at the stories in Genesis from a perspective of forgiveness and second chances. The first three chapters in the book of Genesis record the story of creation. God creates the heavens and the earth and all there is in it in six days. And on the seventh day, God rests and makes it holy. Adam and Eve are the first two people created by God and they live with God in the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden is paradise until the first couple falls into temptation. Adam and Eve disobey God, and sin enters the world. Yet God forgives them and gives humanity a second chance. God is faithful to Adam and Eve. God covers their shame and shows them how to live outside the Garden of Eden. Time goes by until the days of Noah. Corruption fills the land. How bad did the world get? Sometimes I think we have it bad today. But listen to this verse from Genesis 6. The Lord saw that the wickedness of humankind was great in the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of their hearts was only evil continually. Yet God forgives them and gives humanity another chance. God is faithful to the people of the world. God tells Noah to build an ark for his family and for two of every kind of animal. God causes the sky to rain for 40 days and 40 nights. Water covers the earth. After the water recedes, God puts a rainbow in the sky as a sign of God's promise to never flood the world again. Time goes by again until the days of the Tower of Babel. The Tower of Babel was humanity's attempt to build a tower with its top in the heavens. It is a symbol of human pride. It was humanity's attempt to reach heaven without God's help. 
Their work was an act of arrogance and disobedience. Yet God forgives them and gives humanity yet another chance. God is faithful to the people once again. God scatters the people across the land and causes them to speak in different languages to prevent this from ever happening again. God wants the people to learn how to live faithfully to God as God has so faithfully shown so many times to the people. Now imagine, it is about 2,000 years before the coming of Christ. The people of the world live across Egypt and the Middle East. Cultures in each of these areas develop their own religions and spiritual practices apart from God. The Egyptians worship the sun and the Pharaoh. The Canaanites worship the weather gods in high places. The people in Mesopotamia worship a pantheon of deities. Very few people worship Almighty God. God in heaven is witness to what is happening here on earth. One more time, God wants to give the people of the world another chance. God wants to give the people an opportunity to live faithfully to God. So God sets in motion a plan to create a new people, a new nation, and a new way of interacting with God. This plan begins with God choosing a person and his family to live by faith in the one true God. If this man agrees, then God's chosen people will receive a promise of new life and a new future. They will be given a holy purpose to reveal God as the creator of all that is and show the world how to live a holy life according to God's standards. God looks down upon the people of the world. Who will God choose as his chosen people? Terah is the father of Abraham. Terah has two other sons, Nahor and Haran. The Bible says that Haran died before his father. Terah died. It was considered a bad sign for a son to die before his father. Terah the father grieves for his son, and Abraham and Nahor grieve for their brother. Sarah is Abraham's wife. They have no children because she is barren. Being barren carried an added stigma in these days. Children were considered a symbol of God's blessing and a source of pride for women. Other women probably looked down on Sarah for her inability to conceive. We can fairly presume that Sarah grieves too. Terah and his family went to Ur of the Chaldeans, and it was nearby where he died. Abraham was 75 years of age at this time. Abraham and Sarah are a grieving family. They grieve their father and their brother. They have no descendants and most likely felt shame from society. They are in the winter seasons of their lives. They have more than enough reason to feel discouraged and hopeless about the future. Then God enters their lives. From all the peoples of the world, God calls Abraham to become the father of the nation of Israel. God calls Abraham and Sarah to leave their family, their possessions, and their home to go to a land which God promises to show them, a land they had never seen before. God will bless Abraham so he can be a blessing to all the families of the world. The writer of Hebrews says, by faith, Abraham obeyed. President Theodore Roosevelt said, it is better to be faithful than famous. God did not choose Abraham because he was famous or for any other personal quality. 
In fact, Abraham was very different from the other people in the Old Testament. Abraham was not ruddy and handsome like King David. He was not wise like Solomon. There's no mention of any personal accomplishments or outstanding qualities. Abraham did not have a sterling character, which we will hear about in a few weeks. He got on a few people's nerves by not always telling the truth. God chooses Abraham because Abraham is a man of faith. God chooses Abraham because he's the one who obeys God. Abraham obeys God without complaint or bargaining. The Apostle Paul writes in Romans 4, For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed in God, and it was reckoned unto him as righteousness. For Abraham, faith is obedience without reservation. The book of Hebrews says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Abraham and Sarah listened to God, they trusted God, and they obeyed as God required of them. They are people of great faith. Now we will learn during the season of Lent that having faith doesn't mean we don't make mistakes. We will make mistakes. Abraham did some things well, but he had his failures too. Having faith doesn't mean that we won't have our struggles. Abraham showed great faithfulness at times, but he had some struggles too. Having faith doesn't mean that all our relationships are perfect, by no means. Abraham had some fulfilling relationships, but he had some troubled relationships too. In Galatians 3, the Apostle Paul writes, Well then, does God supply you with the Spirit and work miracles among you by your doing the works of the law or by your believing what you had heard? Just as Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. So you see, those who believe are the descendants of Abraham. We are all children of Abraham in the sense that we too are called to a life of faithfulness in God. We can learn from those who came before us, for in their story is our story. God is faithful to Adam and Eve, God is faithful to Noah. God is faithful to the people after the fall of the Tower of Babel. And God is faithful to Abraham and Sarah. If you need a second chance with something or someone in your life, know that God is faithful to you today. During the season of Lent, let us journey with Abraham and Sarah. Through their faithfulness, may we experience the blessings of God. May it be so. Amen.
You are invited to make an offering at the conclusion of the service today in the basket in the back, or if you feel that to support your local church or charity, um, whatever the Lord leads you in giving, uh, be faithful to God as God is faithful to us. So let us sing the Gloria Patri as our, as our prayer. to God, you have kept your promise, Lord, and you are good to me, your servant. Give me wisdom and knowledge, because I trust in your commands. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen. 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 